made it back out here to the shop and we're starting the first task at this uh, fuel injection system and that's going to involve putting the go fast in tank fuel pump into this brand new gas tank that you see here. This is a Spectra gas tank made in Canada and we've got all the parts and pieces that we need including our um, nuts and bolts that put everything together, hose, clamps, plugs and filters as well as the fuel pump itself. So the object here is, is that we're going to find a flat spot on the gas tank and drill a hole and make room for this new pump set up to go in there. And I have no clue what I'm doing. I haven't even read the instructions yet. So I think what I'm going to do right now is uh, take a seat on the old caravan couch and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, so as Tom Morsky would say, so um, everything's pretty self-explanatory. They give you some uh, pretty good pictures and uh, descriptions on what we've got to do. So let me kind of give you the rundown of what uh, what we've got to do, and then I'm just going to go through and do it because. It truly is pretty simple. So, let me show you. What we've got to do is we cannot use the existing hole that is in the tank. And the reason why we can't use that hole is because that's where the sending unit goes. So we've got to come over here and we've got to find a nice flat spot. And I'm thinking this is probably going to be the location. You can do it on a ribbed area. We probably also could come down here and do it in this area. but. I want to get the most out of this tank. I'm going to put it up here and I think this is exactly where we're going to go. So, wish I had a tape measure. Okay, I'm back. Did you miss me? Found a measuring tape. So the way this is designed, being universal, is that we've got to find out how deep we can mount that. So as you can see, we're probably about an inch and a half or so off the mark. If in fact we're going to mount it right here somewhere, so we've got to find out how deep we are here and make sure that we have enough room that once the pump is actually mounted on here and the sock is attached to the bottom of the pump, it says we need to make sure that, that the sock is an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the tank. So what we're going to do is take a few measurements and see where the depth is of this tank and then we'll measure our rod on the this piece right here and see what we have to cut off and then we can start fitting things into place. Then we'll go ahead and start drilling our holes into the top of this brand new gas tank because you know that's just the way we work. And uh, we've got my uh, Diablo uh, soul, soul saw, hole saw kit. We're going to use that that I won off of an Instagram contest. So guys, when you think you're not gonna win anything off Instagram, you can. I did. So when I tag your name, make sure you take a look at it. You just you might become a winner. So anyways, let's take a few measurements and then we can start uh, cutting some things up. Now my memory is really good. My buddy Ross can attest that I can easily manage a simple measurement like 10 and 3 quarter and remember it for two and a half seconds. I think we'll get our hole cut here first and then we can actually take that actual measurement not knowing what the measurement's gonna be for this side right here. I say that's what we do. What do you think, Duff? Oh yeah, I don't have a Duff. I guess I'm on my own with this one. Okay, let's uh, Let's make a hole. Okay, so the instructions tell us that in order to find the location, you're going to use the C ring to determine a nice flat spot or an area big enough. It also says use the top of the tank, so don't be installing it into the side or whatever. So, like I said, I think we're good here. I've got my uh, my little punch, roughly fine center right there. We'll give her a tap. So now that we know our pilot hole. We'll go here and it won't be um, 
walking away on us. So let's get the drilling. No time like the present to put a fresh new hole in a brand new, brand new tank. And my blade's not supposed to be walking, but it is. Try a lower speed here. So I don't have anything here that I can go in and uh, kind of take those sharp edges off there, but we're going to see how far we can get tonight. Anyway, our measurement from here, right there is exactly 10 and a half inches. Which means on this unit here, we're going to have to cut off probably right to the bottom of that piece right there. That touches the bottom of the tank, which I don't think we want to do. I'm going to let it come up probably about halfway of that. Eh, you know what? We're going to come up to... Uh... Let's see what the destruction say. It's not that clear. So I think what we're going to do is we know that we need ten and a half inches. I remember the, the measurement. Um, I'm just going to cut that a little bit short and then once we get the pump secured to the rod then uh, we'll put the sock on it and make sure that we're still well within that ten and a half inches knowing full well that we can adjust that pump up on here a little bit so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off at the desired length um, like I said ten and a half inches I think we're going to go back to probably at least uh, nine and a half inches get that metal off there and then we can start trimming the hoses the black and the clear in the respective uh, position so let's start measuring and start cutting now one of the things they do tell you to do is that once you get these uh, bolts started through the holes is to take your foam ring and kind of push it on there and that'll help hold that in place. Well guess what? If you maybe don't have the quarter inch drill bit that they tell you and you use the next size down because that's all you got and it's such a tight squeeze that uh, you probably gall all the threads trying to pull it through the hole and you get that noise then you don't have to worry about falling into the tank I was gonna say I'm not even bleeding yet but that's blood so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the little lock nuts that come with it and I'm gonna thread them down and I'm gonna slowly pull that up won't bore you guys with that. Be right back. Okay, so after a little bit of work, we got those threaded up. Uh, no problem. Everything is flush. We also found a tool to go around the edges here and kind of deburr it so it's not so sharp. I'm happy with that now. And we were able to get in there with a magnet a couple of times and do a sweep and get some of those filings that may have been down in there. We will rinse this out one more time with some brake cleaner and whatnot to try and get any fine particles that may be left in there but as it sits right now gosh darn it I am confident so we're gonna take our little foam foam gasket they give you two of them so the reason why they give you a thick one is because if you are mounting this in a gas tank that's got the ribs on it then it conforms to the ribs so it creates a seal we're on a flat surface here, so we're only going to be using the thin one. So we'll put that down into place. We'll do our measurement one more time, and then we'll start getting that unit set down in and secure. So my battery died on that camera. So you guys are stuck with the GoPro for a minute. 
we've got the fuel pump housing kind of set down into place and all the measurements that we took are great so all we've got to do now I guess is to get the fuel pump attached to it along with the sock put everything back down in there and finish buttoning this up and this will be done like I said I do want to take everything apart we're at the point where we can pretty well button it up but I want to make sure that I can get uh, that tank cleaned out thoroughly so that's all we've got time for tonight when we come back we're gonna start putting some lines on this fuel pump so that when we do swap the tank I'm not gonna bother showing you guys that because I did that in this video up here somewhere so I'll put the lines on and we'll have them so that when we get it set up the next time we come back those lines will run up underneath the hood we can start doing the under the hood things the fun things um, but we'll have to get the truck up in the air drop that tank as well as get the O2 sensor um, mounted in the exhaust okay it's day two we are out in the shop Saturday morning and we're gonna try and get this thing buttoned up um, today so we pretty much have our fuel system uh, ready to go all we've got to do is get the old tank down, replace the sending unit in here, and then get this in place wired and plumbed. We can't do that until we get uh, the whole unit installed underneath the hood because the wiring right here that goes back to the fuel pump, I've got to run that back so that when I've got everything down, I have access to it. So let's take a quick look and show you just exactly how easy this is and how easy it's going to be to install. They do provide a very detailed chart here uh, for the HEI distributor, which is what this truck has. But I'm going to go over it very quickly with you. So all the wiring that comes off of the unit um, has all these plugins. It's kind of like a octopus here with all these wires coming out. But basically, you've got a plug in here, which is for communication with your screen or your whatever you call it here. So uh, this will be run inside the cabin. Of the truck uh, with this wire and it gets plugged in here you got this big thick wire that goes all the way up and that is for your wideband your air fuel sensor so that will go and get installed into the exhaust once we get the, the uh, truck up in the air we've got the coolant temp sensor that's going to get screwed into the intake we've got this group of wires that comes out which is all your power and your fused wiring so part of this goes over to the battery, the, the big red wire goes to the battery and the orange one goes to the fuel pump and it splits off here. And this is where it gets kind of technical but uh, you've got your accessory power, you've got your tack signal and you've got your fan which is the yellow one. We won't be using that because we don't have an electric fan and the black one is for AC input so when the AC compressor kicks in it knows to bump that idle up a little bit on the, uh, on the throttle body. It really is quite simple. Uh, so simple that even I can do it. Uh, I've never been much for uh, 12 volt wiring or any of this sort of thing, but it's all really plug and play and you cannot, I repeat, you cannot screw up the plugins because nothing plugs into something else. They all have unique plugins. So uh, we're going to get the hood popped. We'll get the old carburetor off and uh, we'll start kind of setting this in place, getting it hooked up, and start running wires where we feel they need to go. So uh, it's not going to be a hugely um, detailed video like some of you guys were requesting. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I just, I want to kind of do it at my pace. Um, I mean, you see everything that I had to do here. So it truly is that simple. Um, the hardest part is what we did in the first part of this video, which was getting the fuel system uh, rigged up. Uh, in the tank but uh, even that wasn't terrible so let's uh, pop the hood we'll get the uh, old quadrajet off the car truck and uh, start setting things in place and getting ready to uh, mock this thing up and if I need any help I'll be sure to ask you guys of course you know how that works <laughs> Okay, so we struggled with that adapter plate a little bit and getting that old carburetor off, but there's also a couple of things on here that we're not going to need. So one of them is this uh, throttle solenoid, and 
what this was for was when we had our issues with the AC kicking on and it down, uh, it drawing the idle down. This would kick in and uh, increase the idle a little bit. We're not going to need that anymore, so we're basically just going to unbolt that from here. We're also not going to need this uh, throttle cable adapter. Uh, simply because it's made for the uh, Quadrajet and I've got a new one going on the throttle body system. Also, hopefully, <laughs> we're not going to need that choke. Uh, so we'll get that choke off there and we're also going to remove this old fuel line because it goes down to the fuel pump. And we're going to be running all new, the mechanical fuel pump, and we're running all new lines back to the new gas tank and fuel pump back there. So I do have a block off plate going on where the mechanical fuel pump is now. So that is one thing that we will do uh, at some point as well. So what we're going to do is go grab uh, a few extra tools and get these other pieces off here. Then we can grab the gaskets and actually set the throttle body in place. So let's do that. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, I think that we're getting upon probably the most schoolgirl excitement-ish time of this <laughs> this whole install and that is getting the throttle body placed on the manifold. So we've got our solenoid taken out, we've got our choke uh, taken off here, uh, everything's out of the way, we've got our throttle cables and kick down cables and everything here. So what we're going to do is pull out the rags from the intake, I'm going to go with this one here, not sure what the difference was between the two gaskets. We just set this down. Like so, I think. It's in place. That right there has got me all warm and fuzzy inside. I'm excited. I could quit right now and I'd be satisfied. Anyways, the other thing that we've got to get installed on there is this bracket and this bracket is for our throttle cable um, to have position and that basically is just going to mount down on those two bolts there as well and then once that once you've got that set you can poke your throttle cable in there and get everything kind of hooked up to the uh, throttle linkage uh, one thing that the instructions did say to do is that as soon as you've got this in place is to run the full range of the throttle and make sure that there is no, uh, it's not hitting up against the intake or anything like that. So we do have full range, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick measurement for the uh, throttle cable bracket thingy here and make sure that it's in the right spot uh, and then we can kind of uh, set these adjustments uh, on here uh, because they are adjustable. So let's do that. Well, we just finished lunch and uh, catching up on some Dylan McCool. Time to get back on the old truck, so let's see where we are so far. Okay, so where we are right now is we've got pretty well all of our wires run. We've got our tack signal, our AC, and our constant power, uh, sorry, our switch power. Constant power is over here on the battery. That will be the last thing we hook up, and we've got our orange wire going down that will plug in uh, once we get the fuel tank and everything all situated. Uh, I've ran some wire loom kind of up over the uh, AC box here so it's just kind of neat running down to the battery and uh, our last thing that we have to actually hook up and plug in is the uh, coolant temperature sensor. We're going to drill a hole here uh, in this spot which is actually provided a uh, water jacket uh, for the coolant temp sensor and dad says he's got a uh, tap uh, that size that will uh, do that for us so we've got to go up to the shop and get that and like I said other than the constant power uh, to the battery that's the last thing we have to hook up up here so then we can get the truck jacked up in the air uh, up on the cribbing drop the fuel tank unplug everything run the fuel lines hmm I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't. <laughs> oh, the O2 sensor. No, uh, not O2 sensor. Air fuel ratio sensor, um, which we've got to put in. But we've got to get the truck jacked up for that as well. So I'm going to run out to the shop. We're going to grab that top, 
and uh, we'll get that done. In the meantime, I'm going to drain the antifreeze out so that we have something to tap into without making too much of a mess. And then we should be done up here. So, so, I keep saying so. You guys catch that? Maybe it's a new beer drinking game. Every time I say so, you guys gotta take a drink. Uh, you'll be hammered by the time this video ends. Anyways, I'll be right back. All right, so uh, we ended up drilling into the intake and we've got this tap here. It's all the way down. We're getting ready to pull it out. So we can screw it up or in, I mean. Um, that's the plan. We're gonna uh, get that out, put that in, plug it in, and then other than 12 volt power, we should be done with the uh, connections up here. And I only made a little bit of mess draining the antifreeze out of the truck. So we will do that and then we can get the truck jacked up in the air and prepare to work on the fuel system. And that we did. We've got the truck jacked up in the air. We've got it sitting on the cribbing in the back as well as the front. And uh, I've got a, definitely it's an old towel from inside the house to mop up the rest of this mess that I made. It's definitely an old towel. So we're gonna get ready to drop the tank, which means we've got to undo the filler neck here. Couple of bolts on the uh, frame and uh, it should drop right down fairly simply. I've done it before. This time there's only about a quarter of a tank of gas in it. Last time I did it, it was pretty well full. So with a quarter of a tank, we shouldn't make too much of a mess taking that fuel dumping it into the new tank, right there, and getting it back up into place. Like I said before, I did it once, but the box was off the truck, so it made getting at those bolts a little bit easier. This time with the box on, we're gonna be up there fighting uh, with it a little bit. But uh, we'll be able to get the lines run and get the uh, power coming back to the fuel pump and get the sending unit switched over. So. I don't know if that's going to happen tonight because, quite frankly, I'm losing steam. I've been out here since, uh, I don't know what time it was, 10.30, 10 o'clock this morning. And, uh, yep, losing steam. So I think I might go have some supper. It's uh, 6.48, so I think I'm going to go grab a bite to eat. My wife just called, said she was leaving work, and uh, going to bring some supper home. So, God bless her. Anyway. I'm uh, gonna call her quits for tonight, I think, and rest my back and come out here tomorrow, finish this up, maybe get started on editing some of this footage for you guys. Um, I don't know if I've said it yet or not, but if you haven't done so already, please go down and click that subscribe button if you like what you see, because uh, we're gonna be doing a lot more of this. I've got another fuel injection system that's gonna be installed on my 79 Chrysler Cordoba. Uh, which currently is basically it's just a small block. It's a 360 done up pretty good Headers dual exhaust all that good stuff. So we'll go over all that and uh, if you uh, want to learn more about that car I'm gonna put a playlist Right up here somewhere so you guys can go uh, kind of get updated and see what we've done to it so far Anyways, I'm gonna call our quits for the night and we'll be back here in a few minutes Okay, we're back out in the garage today sporting our buzzing half dozen straight six T here from uh, straight six fan if you don't know who that is Link right here, go check him out. I uh, got some great content working on his Ford Fairmont. And uh, we're back on the Phytech fuel injection. You remember yesterday I said everything up top was hooked up. And one thing I actually forgot about uh, was the disconnection of the fuel pump. So we do have to get that fuel pump taken apart and the block off plate put on, which I do have. Uh, and we'll be removing all the fuel lines. So we're concentrating today on getting the uh, fuel tank, the existing fuel tank down and getting this one put back and hooked up and we've got all of our fuel line in one of these boxes over here somewhere, uh, our inline fuel filter and getting it connected with power and then the very last thing that we have to do is just plug in this uh, little red power lead. It's 10.07 right now. And with recording and everything else, it's gonna take a little while longer, but I'm hoping that before I have lunch today, uh, we'll have this uh, fuel tank and lines and all that stuff hooked up. Grab a bite to eat back and get this thing started for you guys. So I'm gonna uh, get underneath and I'll show you what we've gotta to do to get that tank down. Let's get to it. All right, so we've got our light up here and uh, there are four bolts right up in here that hold the back saddle in place. 
and then there are four more over here in the front that hold the front saddle in place but we do have to disconnect the uh, wire that hold, that goes to the sending unit and uh, that's the ground right above it and we'll disconnect this fuel line here because uh, it goes up over the frame rail and uh, obviously that's going to come down on the other side of the frame. We'll then grab the jack, put it underneath the uh, fuel tank, lower it down. So the next time I pick up with you guys, we'll be lowering the fuel tank down onto the ground. All right, so we've got the uh, we've got all eight bolts out, and we're getting ready to drop this thing down. And if everything goes to plan, it should slide down fairly simply. That was more challenging than it had to be. Okay, so after some gymnastics underneath the truck trying to get that uh, fuel tank out, we've got them out and sitting side by side. Let's take a look at the similarities and the differences between the aftermarket tank and the GM tank. Obviously this is the GM tank, it's all dirty, and as you can see at the end, it's a little bit of staining around here, and that tells me that that seam may be starting to uh, Fail. So it's good that we're replacing it anyway. Uh, we've got this little plastic guard on it on the end and that's to protect from rock chips coming up from underneath. We'll switch that over. And the straps actually look like they're in really good shape. We're going to have to tank, take those off the saddle and replace everything over to the new tank. Now for those of you guys who follow me on Instagram um, and are as keen as uh, Trucker Dave or Main Trucker on uh, Instagram pointed out that when I showed pictures of the new sending unit of the new fuel pump in the tank, he says, he asked me if that's where the saddle strap would go. And did I think of that? Thankfully, yes, I did think of it knowing that the saddle straps would go here and here. And confirmation tells us that that's exactly uh, where they do go. So basically what we're gonna do is we've gotta get the, the neck and the vent tube switched over to the new tank, uh, take the, the saddles and the straps off uh, to, and put them on the new tank as well as the protective front cover. And then we've got to take the sending unit out and put it in the new tank because this is the old supply line that fed the fuel pump. But it's also our fuel gauge, so all that will stay the same. Um, I'm going to get some compressed air, we'll blow all that off and make sure that none of that crap falls into the fuel even though I will be straining it as I dump it into the new tank. So, there I go saying so again. You guys are gonna be hammered. Um, let me get the air compressor on. I'll put this on a time lapse. We'll get everything switched over and get ready to start plumbing this thing back uh, to the uh, fuel pump, to the throttle body, uh, and get it all put back together and get this thing started before lunch, like I said. So for some reason, I lost my audio one more time, but I want to thank Shane R for putting up a video that uh, gave me the inside scoop on AN fittings and how they're supposed to go. So um, in this little clip here, I'm just talking about what I've got to do in order to get my six AN fittings put together. And I've even drawn out a little diagram here on this piece of wood for uh, me to understand how many pieces I'm going to need, which angles, and also the uh, number of ends in order to make everything work. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Still a little bit of a pain in the rear, but we've got all the lines ready to roll and ready to start plumbing once again. We've got the uh, two lines coming out of the tank here, and they're all tight and ready to roll. And these, this is the uh, return line that goes all the way. We made sure that that was going to be a right angle, so that goes all the way up to the throttle body. And then the other side, on the pressure side, that's going to go into one end of the fuel filter. And uh, then all we've got to do is the power line is already down there. We'll get that wired up to this connector. And then we'll tap into the ground that comes from the sending unit uh, over to here and uh, make sure that that gets grounded before we prop it back up into place. 
Junior's coming out. He's going to give me a hand uh, getting that thing back up in there. So that's what we're going to be doing here next. All right, so we're underneath the truck and we're getting this jacked up. We had it up in place once and what we were finding is we could not get the uh, bolts lined up on the back. The front was fine, but where we've got this uh, pump placed, it's hitting right up on that. So I've got two choices. One, take the tank out, relocate the pump, which I really don't want to do, or I can just kind of notch out a section of the uh, box here. Again, I really don't want to do that. However, it's probably the most convenient to get up there with the angle grinder and cut a little flap out and call it done. So I guess that's what I'm going to do and uh, that way we can get this thing back up in here and get her started. By the way, it's 245. Alright, we got our little notch cut out of the uh, bed frame, um, whatever you want to call those things, and I took an extra precaution and cut some fuel line rubber hose in half and kind of slid it up over them sharp edges just in case. I'm pretty sure we got lots of clearance there now. And I'm not too worried about structure because simply um, it's just this one spot and those ribs are in really really good condition to begin with. So let's try this one more time getting this lifted up into place. We'll try and do that to some uh, time lapse. New tank is installed. The fuel filter is installed and tight, but not securely fastened. We got to come back and uh, get some self tappers to get that done. So the fuel system is pretty much ready to go, except for fuel. Uh, we got to get that fuel dump back in there. And the next thing we've got to do, and the last thing we've got to do, I shouldn't say the last thing. The next thing, as far as the kit goes, is the wide band O2 sensor. And basically, we're going to drill a 7 8 hole and band clamp that to the exhaust for now. You can weld a bung, which is what I will do when I get the new exhaust. Stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to band clamp it in place for now. So I've got to drill that hole, get that installed, plug it in, uh, get some fuel in the system. And like I said before, the last thing we've got to do is get that manual uh, or mechanical fuel pump. Uh, taken out of there and put the uh, block off plate in. I've got my 7 8 drill bit ready. We got to crawl underneath. underneath blah, 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 blah. We've got to crawl underneath this pig one more time, at least, and get that drilled. Uh, band clamp it, get it installed, um, remove the fuel, mechanical fuel pump, and Bob's your uncle. Hook up that power wire. We should get this thing running uh, in no time. I've been saying that all day. And for the record, it's 4.30. <laughs> Noon time. Who was I kidding? Oh, if I had a dollar for every time I was up and down on that creeper underneath this thing today, I'd be I'd be as rich as Tom Mortsky. Um, if the old fuel pump taken out and the block off plate put in, I've got the O2 sensor installed. Fuel filter is not 100% secure. I don't have any self tappers here for some reason. So I've zip tied it up just to get it so it's not going to rattle away. And uh, when I go to the shop there on Monday, I'll pick up a few uh, self tappers. Double checked all the connections. The only thing that's not hooked up is the little screen, the programmer. And uh, the battery is hooked up. I just got to hook up the power to the fuel pump or not to the fuel pump but to the uh, battery just the uh, the main power wire there and then I can prime the fuel pump and get it uh, pressurized I've got to get some fuel in the tank and uh, get that tested that way we make sure we don't have any leaks and then we can first start this thing and uh, get it programmed up and hopefully hear it roar one more time with fuel injection so uh, it's uh, 25 after 5 and uh, mama says supper is almost ready so I've got to go in and get cleaned up I feel like a friggin dirty <laughs> I almost said dirty whore 
I feel like a scum bucket here. I feel like a sleaze ball. I feel like a dirt bag. I feel like a grease monkey. So it's almost time for supper. I'm gonna go eat and come back out. And my wife said that she would help me with uh, checking for leaks and uh, getting fuel back in it. We'll get this thing started up. All right, so we're back out here on Tuesday night simply because while editing this video, I didn't have any sound for the first startup. So it's already had its first startup, but I wanted to take you through the setup and uh, basically let you hear it run while it was uh, working here. So let's get the camera set up and we'll take you through the initial setup on this thing. So when it plugs in, we're gonna wanna go down to the Go EFI initial setup and engine setup. I've already done all this, so I've entered in the number of cylinders, the engine size, the cam, they say one to four, so mine's kind of a mild. Um, we put number two in there. Rev limiter doesn't really matter at this point. I put 56, and runtime idle is at 850. I didn't know what the pump PWM or FCC set 40 meant. I had to look it up, and uh, from what I'm understanding, is it's telling me that uh, 74, it's actually that should be 74.5. Edit, and we're gonna go back and hit number five. Okay. And every time you make a change on these, you got to hit enter to send it to the ECU. So now we're going to go back and uh, you go into idle setup. Um, idle is already set at 850 and idle set mode is on. We're going to go back and show you that in a second. Fan setup, we don't have a fan, so we've got that disabled. And under AC control, we do have AC and that is enabled so that it will boost the RPM by 104. Not sure why it goes in that by fours because if we go down uh, it'll go up in 10 RPM increments. Anyways, that's so when the AC kicks on it boosts the idle a little bit. So now we can go back and start this thing up for the first time. Let's do it. All right, start number two. Here we go. So you can hear the idle going up and down a little bit because it's doing a little bit of a learn. And apparently we want to get the IAC between 3 and 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the adjust idle screw over here. So let's see what happens. So I think that's going to do it. It seems to be idling pretty good there right now. So uh, it's running and we've got the setup, the initial setup done. I think we're almost ready to go for a drive. That won't be in this video, but stay tuned. Well there you have it guys. That is the Fitech EFI system installed on my 77 Chevy C10. I'm pretty excited about this. And I can't wait to get in there and start fine tuning on it because uh, there's a couple of little things that we just want to clean up. Uh, there's so many things that I've got to learn about and I just don't know what they are. So I've done the initial setup. It starts, the fuel pump primes, you can hear it go. And uh, it runs actually very, very well. I can't wait to get this thing on the road and do some tests uh, and compare it to the zero to 60 tests that we did in previous videos. I want to thank Fitech really uh, big time for jumping on board and sponsoring this uh, video and sponsoring Dale the truck because uh, without them we couldn't have made this happen and uh, you know I want to thank those guys because they've been super super supportive uh, with uh, you know the advertising every time I post on something uh, with Fitech uh, they're sharing my posts and other people are seeing exactly what I'm doing I can't wait for this video to go up either because uh, I think it's going to reach a lot of people. Um, one of the things that I did want to point out though is in the instructions when it says you need uh, accessory power, one thing you want to be sure of is that you're getting accessory power full time even when you're cranking. The first time I had it hooked up, uh, I would lose power to that accessory power when I cranked the key so uh, it wouldn't start. Uh, once I found a power that was on the key that was accessory that stayed on as I was cranking, it started right up. No problems at all. So I'm pretty uh, stoked that I was able to figure that one out. Uh, other than that, 
everything seems to be uh, good. Uh, yeah, so that's the video, guys. I know it's a long one. I appreciate you sticking around, and uh, now's another good time to remind you guys, if you haven't done so already, please go hit that subscribe button and follow me along for other projects. We've got other um, vehicles. We've got the 79 Chrysler Cordoba. We've got the 03 and 04 uh, Grand Marquis, the 03 being the lifted one we call Blackjack. Uh, so we've got lots more videos coming up on those. The uh, 04 Grand Marquis is going to be getting a Marty tune here pretty quick, and uh, that should pep it up its step a little bit. So um, thanks for sticking around, guys. You know that I end all these videos with stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.